This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Secret Square. Could it be Bob Denver, Karen Valentine, Walt, the cast of Soap, Henry Winkler, Mr. Ed and Wilbur, Marty J. Wiley, Mark Midbauer, and in the center square, Wilbur Neal. All on the new... It's Tuesday at 6, Wednesday at 10, Thursday at 3. That Darren Pamela Ferdin, um... No, not another Burgess Meredith show. Um... Culture. I'm Mark Spibauer. And I'm Wilbert Neal. And we're here to talk more about these darn Marvel comic books. Yes, indeed. The second part of the great Marvel Universe thing. But first, got to tell you that we're on maybe Tuesdays at 6. You never know. Always Wednesdays <laughs> at 10. 10. And pretty much all the time Thursdays at 3. And maybe sometime on Saturday. Who knows? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> People just tell us. That's just when they tell in. us. That's right. <laughs> just Take, like, uh, set your set your TV to 21 and rip off the knob. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you want to do. <laughs> and also, if you want to write us and, uh, you know, maybe charge us for ripping the knob off your TV set, you want to write to Box 151411, Columbus, Ohio. 43215. That's right. And, in fact, we did get something from uh, the big uh, Fast Wasteland mailbag. And it's from the fine people at Marcon. Now, uh, I know what the Marcon people are going to say. Hey, the our thing already happened. Well, we're the first people who are going to be advertising Marcon 29 next year. So <laughs> get your tickets now. <laughs> Do not wait. Uh, hi, guys. No, it's not Psycho Tammy from Columbus State and Marcon. It's Beth, the sane fun person from the Marcon Hell Hole babysitting room two years ago. When I saw you at the fair last summer, I said I'd try to send some info for the next Marcon. Well, here it is. And in fact, we got it. <laughs> That's right. Sorry I wasn't able to get it to you any sooner. If you want to give Marcon one more try, I think this would be the year to do it. So that's that's the big deal here, uh, and it, and, it, and uh, for those who went, since this is going to show after uh, <laughs> this uh, the Marcon actually occurred, it's a uh, it's it's a fine event, and uh, so you you may want to go to Marcon 29 next year. <laughs> who knows who will be there? That's right. <laughs> By golly, who knows? <laughs> who the heck knows? And speaking of other things, um, apparently a local DJ had a a disparaging comment on Vast Wasteland in the paper. Well. All I can say for him is, fella, if somebody locked you in a room with a TV, I doubt the TV would be safe. And Dennis Miller wrote a song about you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. 
<laughs> okay, Dennis Leary. Leary. Leary, not Dennis Miller. <laughs> correct me when I'm wrong. wrong. <laughs> and we're correcting you. Because okay. we think you're wrong, too. <laughs> and so. now, on to Marvel Comics. Yes, indeed. Now, yeah. last time when we finished off or were Pretty told to, to get the off. heck out of here, yeah, that's right. we were still talking about this guy, the Mighty Hulk. That's right. That's right, this is the Mighty Hulk. Okay, and basically, um, we went through the whole thing about uh, Bruce Banner and the radioactive thing and all that. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, we move on. Bruce had a, Bruce, <laughs> Bruce had a cousin. Well, in fact, he still does have a cousin, Jessica Walters, who, who apparently grew up in Dayton, Ohio. Anyway, she and mm. Bruce were like brother and sister, even though they were cousins, you know, and there was like five years between them and all, and Bruce went away and got into the scientific thing and didn't see a lot of her. So he went back, and um, Jessica had become a lawyer, and she was defending this one, um, one criminal, and something happened in there, and his men got upset, and they came back and shot her. And, well, she's losing a lot of blood, and Bruce just happened to be back at that time, so he rigged up this, uh, this transfusion thing and, and gave her some of his blood because he knew that they had the same type of blood. Well, by golly, now she has a little more to her blood, okay? <laughs> because Bruce has this radioactive blood that turns him big and green when he gets upset. Well, she did pretty much the same darn thing when those criminals came back. And um, so, but she, something else happened, and she stayed that way. She's big and green all the time now, but she loves it. And she turned it into part of her profession and her whole lawyer thing. And, well, she's just the incredible She-Hulk. That's Yes, right. indeed. The incredible She-Hulk. The sensational. The sensational She-Hulk. And she's big and green and... You're God right. love her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I suppose there's other people that were affected by the gamma radiation, like there's a Doc Samson who's got green hair and things happen to him, and there's, <laughs> there's his friend that always snaps his fingers, his cool sidekick, but he wasn't really affected by it, he's just <laughs> affected by the whole persona, and yeah. so uh, there's that thing. Well, let's move on to somebody else now, shall we? That's right. Okay. Here we go. Matt Murdock. <laughs> Who, um, whose father was a boxer, and he grew up in, oh, the Hell's Kitchen part of New York. And he um, went ahead there, and that was pretty much it. He uh, helped some guy when he was, was young. There was a blind guy going across the street, and he jumps out to help him, and there's this truck going by with, oh, no, radioactive stuff on the back. <laughs> <laughs> <When> that happens. <laughs> okay, so he pushes the blind guy out of the way, but the truck crashes, the radioactive stuff breaks, and it gets all over him, and now he's this, like... This is, by the way, they, why they have the rule that the, that the trucks have to go around 270. That's right. They didn't right. have that. Boom, they have, they have, have to go, they have to go the outside place. the whole perimeter of That's the tree right. now. And <laughs> if only they had well, that Well, not rule. back then, gee. No. <laughs> so um, he ended up in the hospital, and uh, they had his face all bandaged up and everything, and, well, when they took the bandages off, he looked okay, but um, he couldn't really see as far as seeing goes, but... He could sense things, because he's got this radar sense now, where he can Ooh. detect things, and he knows where things are. He can see people, but not as we see them. He can see them kind of, I guess, with Geordie vision, kind of, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. He, um, Geordie vision. He can sense things, and he can, <laughs> all his senses were heightened. He just lost his eyesight. Ah. So, um... He decided to put this to good use and become the amazing daredevil. The man without, man fear. without fear. Basically, if you can't see it, you can't be afraid of it. And so <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much his whole thing. <laughs> and he's real athletic and everything, and he has this amazing billy club that he uses to swing around with. Well, it's not really like this, so we'll just put that away. Won't we? <laughs> anyway, it's just this amazing billy club when, when he's not... Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> when he's not using the billy club, he takes it and puts it together, and it becomes his cane. And there's all kinds of things in this cane. And he's a lawyer. Well, another <laughs> lawyer. Son of a gun. Are we seeing a trend here? So if they get in some legal trouble, they're all set. That's right. There's <laughs> at least two superheroes around. And um, so there's, his, his career was kind of ruined by um, uh, one criminal, but uh, we'll talk about him a little later. Let's move okay. on to another hero. Uh, in the Marvel Universe, there is a certain oil company, the Roxxon Oil Company, who basically has a uh, counterpart in our own world, but they just go about doing anything devious and nasty, and at one point they decided they wanted to have um, 
a super soldier kind of guy who could go into places and uh, clear out any any um, insurgents or usually probably guys. Um, <laughs> environmental guys, uh, helpless natives, things yeah. like that. You know, <laughs> just going and clear them out before going in with their big equipment and doing things. Right. So they created Deathlock. Deathlock, the killing machine, their secret killing machine. <laughs> anyway, and. Um, he, um, it, start, it kind of pretty much started off, he was like uh, exploring space or something like that, but then they, they brought him back down to Earth, and uh, <laughs> basically they made him out of uh, somebody who, who had died, and they kind of cybernetically re-enhanced the body, and half the living tissue was still there, and then half of the, um, half of it was cybernetic, and so um, he became Deathlock, and he was going around doing what they said, and then um, he gradually got his own memory back and realized that he had been used to make be, become this cyborg and he didn't like that idea so um he wants his body back basically <laughs> because they <laughs> hey. they've got his actual body in a floating in a in a chamber and ah. <laughs> it's like he has to do what they say or else he'll never get his body back ah. well so he kind of half does what he said they say and half does it and then he's got his full consciousness back so he's pretty much become a renegade now and he can't really go back to his family because they he doesn't think they'd accept him very well being half dead and moldy and yeah. the other half cybernetic and yeah, so that uh, is a problem. he kind of wanders around and it's like every time he thinks he's found his body they move it so <laughs> that's pretty much his whole <laughs> thing to do there run around trying to find his body and yeah. try to see his family you know and all like that and so that's that's the death lock story that's the death lock deal and if you look real close you can see his brain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's that mm. line. Now, the last time, we talked quite a bit about the Fantastic Four. Let's, let's show you Johnny Storm now, the human torch of the Fantastic Four. And the whole idea that now they're coming out with this big Fantastic Four movie. <laughs> I don't know if you can see any of that there or not. The characters, whatever. <laughs> anyway. Um, this was a low-budget movie this time. They're, they're not spending a whole lot on it because basically the Marvel other Marvel movies, movies, just, movies don't make it. just don't make so it. So why so, spend um, the money? <laughs> that's kind of the thing. But um, that one of the problems I guess they had before was well the companies would change or when they did them on TV they tried to make them I don't know to they tried to bring out the human side and they were right. on every week. Yes. Run out of stories. You see yeah. the same effect over and over and over again. So. People just got kind of sick of it, and um, <clears throat> something that they're trying, well, the human thing, they're trying to do the, too much of the human thing, and right. um, that's something that DC never really tried to do with theirs. Mm -hmm. They basically dealt with the fact that they're superheroes, and that's it. I that's mean, you right. see them in their, in their, um, their du dual identity, whatever, their regular person identity, but um, most of the time they were just the superhero. That's right. And they were in unusual situations anyway, where the Marvel people, they always try to put them in normal situations. <laughs> here's, here's this doctor and he's just <laughs> traveling from town to town. <laughs> here's this college student and he's struggling to make money. That's right. People don't want to see that. And in the, la in the last ten minutes you'd actually see them in the costume. Right, that's like, stuff. No, 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 no. It's stuff that <laughs> they're doing themselves. We want to see people that are big flashy that's playboys. Right. <laughs> Lots of money. No yeah. cares in the world. There you just chasing women and laughing yeah. and having a good time. <laughs> and at night, they're superheroes. That's right. <laughs> or they're mild-managed reporters for the big metropolitan the newspaper. newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> and they look exactly <laughs> like they would without the suit on. They just have on a big suit that, that just fits them well because they had to make it big to fit over all those bulging muscles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and glasses with no glass in them. Yeah. Okay. But nobody ever figured that out. No, you know, no, 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 you know no. they were just concerned that he was... Superman <laughs> with the big curl in his head, but <laughs> well, that's that, and that's that's pretty much the whole philosophy of DC versus Marvel. It's not as much as it used to be, but pretty much Marvel did the trying to get into realism as much as possible, and DC said, no, 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 <laughs> kids want fantasy, yeah, <laughs> and that's what we're gonna give them, <laughs> and that's probably why their um, movies and TV things have worked more. Although now with the um, the recent. Uh, the the comic thing the uh, the 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 cartoon thing the um there is there is a, a Marvel cartoon that's doing well but we'll talk more about that okay. next time because it goes into our next uh, that's right our next that's big right. subject we, we there want to go into that. but that it's doing real well <laughs> okay and so we'll just have to see how this Fantastic Four thing does and it's coming up later this year look for it <laughs> so all right 
Let's, uh... Where are we going to move it into now? Let's do... Well, let's see. We've got one, um... A representation of a Norse god character here. Thor, the That's mighty right. Thor. Um, <laughs> in his human persona, he was a doctor also, by golly. Hmm. Um, doctor, well, I know it's Blake, but I want to say Robert Blake, and that's Beretta. <laughs> that's not <laughs> no, him. No, no, <laughs> it's Dr. no. Dr. Blake. No, no. <laughs> he would, well, Thor, Thor, the Norse god of thunder, he'd come to Earth and he'd smash his hammer down, and it would become this, this, um, a stick, basically, a walking stick that this doctor would use, and he's just a mild-mannered, um, doctor in New York, because they're all basically in New York. That's and right. um, every now and then, whenever trouble would arise, he would smash that stick down and become Thor and fly off and talk with a lot of these and thou. Well, here's, and here's a nice example here. <laughs> a lot of Elizabethan uh, <laughs> speech and mannerisms. Tis you, my lord, we have found the thunder god. My heart is gladdened at the very sight of thee, for thou art too who I hold most dear. Take heed, mighty one, we have come to warn thee of danger most deadly. <laughs> and these are all his good friends up yeah, there in Asgard. <laughs> his <laughs> buds, buds in Asgard. Asgard. <laughs> <laughs> and of course they, they were too this cheap like to give really, this Thor really cape. bad high school <laughs> Shakespeare production. <laughs> Go thee hint. <laughs> come thee hither. <laughs> Be thee gone. <laughs> What's that thou didst not do such a thing? <laughs> That's right. Feel my wrath. Anyway. <laughs> now let's, since we talked about mighty playboys and guys like that, let's talk about Iron Man. Pretty Iron much the, Man. <laughs> Iron Man. The, the playboy yeah, of the, the, um, the Marvel Universe playboy. <laughs> and he is actually industrialist. <laughs> Tony Stark. Tony Stark. Who was uh, the head of the uh, Stark Corporation, surprisingly <laughs> enough. Just kind of like Wayne, <laughs> Wayne Enterprises. And <laughs> <laughs> Basically, um, his whole problem here is he, he was um, this industrialist, and he got invited to, uh, oh, <laughs> 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 yes, <laughs> got invited to the, the Southeast Asian area during, during kind of during the, the Vietnam conflict there, and um, <laughs> he was over there doing some things, and by golly, some communists came in and captured him. Uh -oh. And so they took him off to their little communist hideout place there in the jungle. <laughs> and, <laughs> a communist hideout? Yeah, <laughs> communist hideout place in the jungle. And so, big commie hideout. <laughs> he was there, and he was um, working with this one older oriental guy on a, um, on a suit. And he was he was pretty much dying too because they had they shot him. He had shot him kinda of close to the heart or something there. So uh <laughs> he was working with this guy on this suit and uh they decided well they're gonna get back at those communist guys, so they made this suit of armor and Tony Stark got in it because it would help him to survive with his heart problems and everything. And it was a big old iron suit, big gray iron suit. And um <laughs> He put it on, and he went, and he defeated the communist guys, and he pretty much had to stay in the suit because if he got out of it, he would die. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> and so <laughs> he had to stay in there until he got his heart, heart worked on, and he got that problem figured out, and by golly, then his girlfriend comes along and shoots him, and so now he's paralyzed, and he had to get a... <laughs> Chipping his spine, and he had to wear the suit again all the time. And he's basically spending most of his uh, billions just trying to keep himself trying going. to keep the suit going. There, that, that's pretty much Iron Man's story there. And <laughs> along with Jim Rody Rhodes, his faithful sidekick and helper and bodyguard, and sometimes Iron Man, they go along and they fight industrial crime wherever they find it. <laughs> and let's Never move on. Way. Let's move out into. Space, where okay. you've got, um, well, you had a bad guy, um, Galactus, who was the world eater. He would come along and he'd find a planet and he would suck it dry and eat up all its nutrients and everything. And he had targeted Earth as his next planet to come and devour. And he sent along his herald to make sure that he could do so. His herald, the Silver Surfer. Ooh. Here we have silver, here we have real silver. <laughs> And basically, he came to Earth, and he had to tag. He had to tangle with the Fantastic Four, and find out that well, Earth was full of worthy beings, and Galactus couldn't eat it. And so, the Silver Surfer ended up staying here and becoming kind of Earth's protector against hey, galactic <laughs> wrongdoing. <laughs> kind of 
There you go. <laughs> silver Surfer, Surfer Dude. <laughs> the Silver Surfer Dude. Silver Surfer Dude. <laughs> Hang loose. <laughs> anyway, um, the Silver Surfer Dude. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the deal with him. <laughs> okay. You know, by golly, we might need... No, no, let's, let's keep going. What, what the heck? <laughs> Who else we got? We talked about the Fantastic Four. Basically, um, Reed Richards, when he was in school, he, he had this, um, this guy that was just about as smart as he was named Victor Von Doom. Victor Von Doom. <laughs> now, this is a was, guy who is pretty much, his name is pretty much uh, <laughs> destined to take him <laughs> into evil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, by you know, golly. You'll become Mr. Philanthropist <laughs> with a name like Victor Von Doom. He's from like the, <laughs> the upper, lower, eastern, middle... European mania. Is there, there, there's some. What's the name of the Latin There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and that's basically his residence now. Because while he was there in college, he decided to try this experiment to try to put him in touch with oh anything that we can't really see. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he ended up blowing the whole place up, <laughs> himself included. And so he takes a hiatus to um, the Himalayas. And uh, this this this. Um, this group of uh, monks take him in and they fashion a mask for him to wear because his face and his whole look there is pretty much beat up. And they create an iron mask for him and he becomes not just Victor Von Doom, he is now Doctor Dr. Doom. Doom! And he's like the nemesis of the whole Marvel Universe, but mm. mostly the Fantastic Four. <coughs> okay, so. So that's him. That's pretty much that. <laughs> oh, let's see. We probably don't have time for one more, although there's still... Um, oh, who we got? There's Dr. Octopus, who got these arms grafted onto him, <laughs> doing the scientific experiments, and now he's after Spider-Man all the time. Or there's there's the, the Green Goblin, who um, doesn't always look like this. He's actually a guy under this suit, but um, he had on the suit one time. Well, no, he didn't have the suit on. He got caught in some kind of a big experiment. Something he was doing himself, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, it happens all the time. <laughs> it, it kind of um, warped his brain, so he's after Spider-Man all the time now. Yep. And then he well, died. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, of course, then there's... Let's talk about the big V. That's Spider-Man's big hero, big enemy. <laughs> Venom, who in inherited Spider-Man's old black suit, and he... Um, They've just got a thing against Spider-Man because basically he ruined both of their lives. This is not just one being, this is two beings, and <laughs> he's after Spider-Man because he's ruined both of their lives. Pretty but, much. Well, that's pretty much all of that. So, next time, I guess, <laughs> we'll have to continue with this because we're out of time now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're just out of time. Are we? <laughs> Oh, we okay. can keep talking. We can keep talking, so I can tell you more about this Venom guy. Let's hear more about yeah, that. Venom, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're not out of time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well. <laughs> mm, that's interesting. <laughs> Gene Simmons. <laughs> Try this one, Gene. Oh, almost touched my chest. Okay. Anyway, during the Secret Wars, where a bunch of heroes were zooped up off of Earth, and a bunch of bad guys were zooped up off of Earth, <laughs> pretty much the rip and they off were the, taken boo, pretty, to a... Pretty much the rip off the Crisis on Infinite Earths from DC. <laughs> okay. They were done about the same time, yeah. and they did have a brainstorming session. They said, well, we've got to do something no, like that. <laughs> Let's take a bunch of heroes, heroes a, bunch a bunch of bad Bad guys. And they'll fight well, each other. Take them to a place where nobody's ever heard and of. And we'll have to worry and... about the rest of the continuity. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <coughs> we'll call it a secret war. <laughs> and we'll do a big 12-issue thing off of it. Yeah. And basically, um, during the secret war, Spider-Man's suit get suit. Spider-Man's suit <laughs> gets ripped up. <laughs> so he goes to get a new suit <laughs> from the new suit machine. But nobody told him which machine was the new suit machine. So when he goes into the room, it's a button and a black ball falls and puts it on. He goes over to it and it molds itself onto his body. And it's a cool new black suit. Yeah. And it does everything. He doesn't even need to fill up the web cartridges because they're just built in there. And it makes its own web. In. So, um... He takes it back to Earth because um, it's cool. And all he has to do is think, and it'll just become normal clothes, too. And he doesn't even have to take the suit off all the time. It's great. And if he does want to, it'll just kind of mold itself off of him, and then it'll come back, which is cool. So he, he goes around like that, and then um, he's starting to feel tired and run down all the time. 
he doesn't know what's happening. What's happening Iron is at night when he goes to sleep, the suit gets back on him and it animates his body and makes him go out and swing around and do all the stuff he does during the day. <laughs> and so <laughs> and he gets back home and then it's time to wake up and go back to classes. And so he just doesn't know what's going on. So he finally figures out that it's the suit doing it. The suit made him do it. Bleh. It's the suit. Bleh. The suit. Bleh. And so um, he goes and Spider-Man goes and sees his good buddy Reed Richards. And Reed Richards says, hmm, well, let me think about this. Let me think some more. <laughs> OK, basically. <laughs> We'll, we'll do some tests, and we'll find out what's wrong. And so they put him into a sound ring room, and tried, they try everything on it, and finally figure out that sound affects the suit. So they figure if they bombard it with enough sound, the suit will leave. And so they try that, and it's too much sound because it almost kills Spider-Man too. but they do have the suit off of him, and they keep it, they house it, but the suit gets out. And it goes out and finds Spider-Man again. Happens. And so Spider-Man, he goes to this church, and he rings the bell loud enough to knock the suit off, and then he goes back. And so the suit's, the suit's just up their days because it's actually an alien symbiote that's been living off of him, draining his energy and things. So, <clears throat> in the meantime, as a reporter, because we all know that Peter Parker works for the Daily, Plan the Daily Bugle. The Bugle. Excuse me. Almost <laughs> jumped cotton into E there. That's right. <coughs> jumped right over from Marvel to DC, <laughs> although they did do a big thing. Where yeah, they did. Anyway. That's right. Anyway, he, um, he works for one paper, and there's a reporter named Eddie Brock who works for another paper, and Eddie Brock is working on this big story about this sin eater guy who's been going around and killing people, and um, he's, gotten, he's getting information from this guy that says, yeah, I'm a sin eater, and he keeps sending him information, and so Eddie's writing him up and doing his big story, the big thing, and it's a real big story, and everybody's following it and everything, and then he finally exposes who the person is. Meanwhile, Spider-Man goes out, and he happens upon the real sin eater. And so he brings oh. him into justice. Oh. And it's like, uh-oh, Eddie Brock's story has been discredited. Oh, Eddie Brock loses his job. <laughs> and so he's going moping around. He ends up at the church where the alien suit is. He's got something against Spider-Man because Spider-Man ends his career. The alien suit's got something against Spider-Man because Spider-Man left him alone to die, basically. The alien suit grabs onto Eddie Brock, and he becomes Venom. <laughs> 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 That's like every time you see Venom, he gets bigger <laughs> and bigger, <laughs> and he just keeps getting bigger, <laughs> and his Amazing. mouth keeps getting wider and wider, <laughs> and he gets nastier and nastier and nastier, and keeps coming after Spider-Man. So they. It, they caught him and they put him in the vault, which is like Marvel's big super containment um, prison for super the, the power Arkham beings. The asylum of the uh, Marvel Universe. But he escapes <laughs> and he keeps getting away. And so now, in the continuity, basically Venom's trying to reform and turn over a new leaf saying, well, I don't like Spider-Man, but I can't hold it against him that he did this to me. So <laughs> he's, trying to, he's trying to be good, but every time he gets out there, people say, hey, you're Venom. And so they you're just, a bad guy. They just get after him, and he ends up having to hurt people. But he won't hurt the innocent. He'll only hurt the guilty, which makes him sound kind of like the Punisher. This guy, doesn't <laughs> it? Huh? <laughs> the Punisher who's always after the guilty. <laughs> That's right, the Punisher. And hey, if you gotta look at them, their suits kind of there, kind of <laughs> the black with white on them. That's similar. Mm. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, I guess. Dude. Too bad because next time we're going to talk about the uh, about uh, the uh, the third the part, of basically, comics, <laughs> the history of cable. Okay. The history of cable television, and then next time on the next comic book version, we go into more Marvel stuff. That's right. And, <laughs> and we'll next time I may even say something. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. Come on, everybody! <laughs> Wait a minute! No, I wasn't finished yet. <laughs> I'm back. I have more to tell you. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland.